Hello, this is AJ Hogue. Welcome to the Effortless English Show. So this is AJ Hogue. Welcome to the Effortless English Show. This is episode number four. As usual, let me check my audio, make sure everything's working. I want to be sure you can hear me. So let me check the broadcast, and then we will get started as usual. Seems like everything is working, so let's begin. All right, so as usual, let's start with the mission, the code and the values of Effortless English. I like to discuss this in every episode, kind of open every show with our mission, our values, and our code because these are the guiding principles. These are the ideals. These are the ideas. These are the... Uh, this is the deep purpose of Effortless English, beyond just English. So our code is how we all agree to behave in our community, and that is, number one, we do the best we can. Number two, we do the right thing. Number three, we show each other we care. And basically what this is saying is that our community is a positive community. We support each other. We care for each other. We say nice things to each other. We encourage each other. Um, you know, and we also just try our best. And sometimes we might make mistakes, but we keep going and we keep trying. Right? So it's a positive community. Very important. Our mission, to explore new opportunities for growth, to bring confidence, vitality, and happiness to people all over the world, to boldly go where we have never gone before. And this is what... We, as a group, myself, our VIP members, uh, the, the people who are in our company, our Power English members, our course members, and our just general crew, everybody out there who is a part of Effortless English, we all share this mission together. We're all working for this mission together. Exploring new opportunities for growth, always trying to learn. Always trying to find new ways to learn and improve in our lives in general, not just in English. Uh, bring confidence, vitality, and happiness to people all over the world. So we're bringing confidence and energy and happiness to other people around the world. Maybe people close to us, maybe strangers, it doesn't matter. Right? It's about contributing to everyone around us and to each other in our community. Boldly going where we have never gone before. It's really about living an adventurous life, a bold life, right? This might literally mean traveling and going to new places. It could mean just exploring new ideas. And finally, our values. Number one, devotion to the mission. That's, what's a, that's what our community shares. The mission is what brings us all together. Uh, number two, enthusiasm. We have an, ex an excitement for life, an excitement for the mission, an excitement for learning. Number three, constant and never-ending improvement. Not perfection, which is impossible, but just constantly improving, 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 which is always possible. It's always possible to at least improve a little bit. Number four, contribution. So again, contributing to others, contributing to our community, contributing, giving. Number five, self-reliance. Very important. We are independent learners. It means we... Don't look to other people to solve our problems. We rely on ourselves. Yes, sometimes we might have to go and get help. We might need to go get coaching. But we take responsibility. We know it's our responsibility to do what's necessary. We don't wait for other people to save us or to tell us what to do. Number six, persistence. When something's important to us, we keep going. We keep going. We don't quit. If we, if we have a mistake, we get back up. We keep trying. If it's tough, we keep going. If we fail, we get up, we learn, and we keep going. When things are important, we are persistent. And number seven, positive leadership. So most of all, that means leading by example. Leading other people by showing them in the way you live how to be successful or how to be more positive or how to attain you know, a, a, this, our mission and a, and a great life positive leadership by encouraging 
and finding other people's strengths and encouraging them to also succeed and be strong. So that's our code, our mission, and our values. All right, so let's move on with the show, shall we? Now, hopefully we have a guest today. I have invited our guest, Barabelle, who is uh, one of our superstar VIP members. And uh, we'll see if she gets the invitation. Sometimes with Google Hangouts, with the new the technology we're using, the uh, thing we're doing, you know, sometimes there's some confusion. Last week I told my dad the wrong time. <laughs> so uh, there's always little problems that happen. So we're doing the best we can. Doing the best we can. We'll see. Hopefully Barbell will join us. First, let's go to Effortless English News. What's happening in the world of Effortless English? Um, first of all, the movie course I'm working on, the documentary course, which I'm calling AJ Live. I'm AJ. Live is re refers to the live event I did in Hanoi, Vietnam last month. So we videotaped the Hanoi event, and we videotaped... Uh, several months before that event to show what I was doing and uh, I'm making a, a film about that you know a whole like um, right now it's about an hour 40 minutes and so the news this week is that I finished the first rough cut yay so a rough cut for a movie a rough cut is it's kind of the first edit right you take all this video that you have and you put it together in a movie but the idea of rough, meaning it's not, it's not perfect yet. It's not finished yet. It's just the first time. It's the same when we do when we write. The first time we write something, we call that a rough draft. Right, a rough draft. It means that it's not finished yet. It's just your first ideas. You write them down. They're probably grammar mistakes. They're probably spelling mistakes. You may need to change it a lot. But you gotta get the first time. You gotta get that first draft. Draft meaning the first uh, page, you know, the first collection of pages, the first finished work. So a rough draft in writing is that first draft, that first writing. Whether it's an essay or a book, doesn't matter. And then of course, what if you're a professional? If you really want it to be good, then you go back and you rewrite it. You edit it again, 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 making it better each time, constantly improving it, correcting the mistakes, making everything better, until finally you get the final draft, which is the final version. So in film, because film used to be, you know, now with video, we're just doing everything digitally on the computer. But in the past, you know, there was actually a piece of film, and they would cut it and they would put, tape them together. So that's why it's called a rough cut for film or video. So I finished the first one. So the, right now it's at about an hour and 40 minutes, but I'll be cutting more of that. So I'll probably cut it down to an hour and a half, hour 20 minutes, something like that for the, uh, the main film. And then I'll make a whole course to go with it. So this won't be ready till really towards the end of this year, uh, but I'm making progress. The rough cap cut is finished. First draft, first cut, yes. Uh, more news. Oh, yes, the original course. My original course. The original course, the reason it's called the original course, the original Effortless English course, is that it's the very first course I ever recorded for Effortless English. I actually recorded the course in my apartment in San Francisco. I was working um, as a teacher in a school at that time. So I would go to school. And then I would come home to our little one-room apartment, and my wife Tomoe was there, and uh, I would, after school, I would record a lesson. And then the next day I'd go to class, and then I'd come back, and then I'd record another lesson. And then slowly I made the original course. And if you listen to the original course, you know, the audio quality is, uh, is a little bit rough, because I recorded it in my apartment. Uh, so you can sometimes hear the buses going by under my window, or, a, you know, a, 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 a siren as a as a fire engine goes by or something like that. So, uh, But many of those lessons are some of my most popular ones. They're, it was a very popular course uh, with some very popular topics. So I, many people have asked me to sell it again, and so we are re-releasing it, and we're adding more text. When I first did the original course, uh, there was not 
transcripts. There were, there were not texts for everything, just for some things. But now we're getting text for everything. Every audio in the course will have text. So if you have any questions, if you don't understand something, you can go and you can read so you know what is being said. So we're almost ready for that. that that'll be in two to three weeks. We will release the original course, and you can buy it if you don't have it already. So, yay. And uh, let's see, what's my third? Oh, yes, uh, the third piece of news. Effortless English News, next week's Effortless English show. I don't know if we will have a show next week. I'm not sure. Episode 5. Because I will be in Thailand next week, traveling to Chiang Mai, Thailand for one week uh, for a photography workshop. And uh, I'll be in a hotel. And with hotels, sometimes they have a good internet connection and sometimes they have a terrible, slow internet connection. If it's slow, I won't do this show next week because you won't be able to watch it. There'll be breaks. It'll be terrible. So if I have a very fast connection in my hotel, then I'll do it, although maybe a little later because I'll be in a different time zone and my photography class doesn't end until late. So, so in other words, for next week's show, episode 5, I will tell you on Twitter and Facebook. I'll announce on Twitter. I'll announce on Facebook, on Google+. Yes, we're doing it, or no, we we'll, might skip one week. If we don't do it next week, don't worry. The week after that, I'll probably do the show then. So we might miss one week. But maybe not. We'll see. I'm going to check my internet connection in my hotel in Thailand. If it's good, I'll do a show from Thailand next week. If not, we'll skip one week. All right. So that's our news. Now, we're supposed to have a guest, Farabel. Now, I don't know if I told her the wrong time. The time should be correct. Uh, I sent her an invitation, and, I, and she hasn't joined. So I'm going to just move forward with the show, and uh, hopefully Barbell will join in a few minutes. If she doesn't join, try again. Maybe uh, in the next show she can try. Or a future show. Okay, so we'll skip. Usually this is the time for the Effortless English success story, and uh, Barbell was going to come on and talk about that. If she comes on, we'll do it then. So we'll skip over that for now, moving forward. So in this segment, I would like to talk about just kind of like international, an international life of adventure. I can think of a lot of great reasons to learn English and to learn to speak English well. Of course, for me it was easy because I was born in the United States. But uh, English has given me a lot of great opportunities in life. Now, of course, people learn English for many reasons. Uh, people learn English to, um, you know, get international jobs. Uh, people learn English for travel. Um, people learn English for, you know, school. But uh, I think one of the great re reasons is that you can really live this great international life, and that might be include that an international life of adventure. You, know, you can travel around and you can go almost anywhere in the world and use English to communicate. It's wonderful. It's, for me, that's been the great thing about being an English speaker. And uh, I do my best to, to use this, you know. Um, so um, I have a big adventure coming up, another adventure. I like to do these adventures. My friend Joe, Joe Weiss from Learn Real English, uh, just recently emailed me, and he invited me to join him in, in an adventure, a new adventure, next year. We're going to do it next year, but we need to train and prepare for it. And our adventure will be, we were, we're going to hike, walk, hike, backpack, the uh, El Camino de Santiago. So El Camino means the way or the road. So the translation in English, the road of Santiago. You could call it, that could be a good translation, the Road of Santiago. This is a famous uh, pilgrimage route. So it started, actually, it's pre-Christian, even before Christianity. Uh, groups of people would walk this, this way, this road, to the city of 
the town of Santiago in Spain. This is in Spain. And it was kind of a ritual so that w they would walk, and when they got to the end, they would you know, burn all their clothes. And this, this whole walk, this whole ritual of walking this long road and then arriving at this place, it's kind of a ritual, this, a symbol of s being born again. You know, kind of uh, leaving behind, you know, your uh, maybe some old problems and uh, and kind of being born again to a to a new, newer, fresher life, something like that. Then later, uh, with Christianity, the Christians, uh, as they often did, <laughs> uh, took this uh, ritual and they made it into a Christian ceremony. And then now, more recently, it has just become a general uh, kind of uh, walk. And when I say walk, it's about 30 days or more of walking, 30 to 45 days. So you start, uh, there are different paths you can take, but generally you, uh, one, the most famous one is start. you start in a town in France near the border of Spain, and then you walk up over the mountains and then into Spain, and then you walk all across northern Spain. It's about 500 miles. Um, uh, kilometers, what is that in kilometers? I don't know. Um, 800 kilometers, 900 kilometers, something like that. And uh, in fact, there's a, there's a movie about this. So if you want to learn more about the Camino, El Camino de Santiago, the, what my friend Joe and I are going to do, you can watch a movie called The Way. The Way. Here, I'll type it on Twitter. The way. Uh, it's a couple years old, this movie. Uh, I'm just going to put it on Twitter here. Mo I'll put movie about El Camino. So if you're on Twitter, boom, you can. Bear and I just saw Bear Bells on Twitter, so I'll answer her in a second and see if we can get her on the show in a minute. So, The Way. I'll El Camino de Santiago. So I was kind of surprised when my friend Joe, uh, Joe is one of my best friends. My two best friends in the world are uh, Kristen and Joe from Learn Real English. Uh, and uh, But I was surprised when Joe emailed me about this because, um, uh, I don't know, he just, you know, I, I knew he'd seen the movie, The Way, about about this this walk but uh, I didn't realize he was so interested in it. So I'm, I'm excited because I really love these kind of uh, adventures. My wife and I, Tomoe, we did something like this in Japan uh, in 2010. We did a trip in Shikoku, Japan, which was also about 30 days. And we walked you know, every day. You're, like, you're walking all day, every day for about 30 days. And in Japan, it's a Buddhist pilgrimage. And you visit all these Buddhist temples all around this huge area of Japan going up and down mountains and it was a fantastic experience so um, I'm excited to do this. Now to do this will require some training, physical training because you walk about you know, 15 to 20 miles per day. Um, let's see, what would 20 miles per day be? Uh, oh, kilometers, I don't know. Um, 30? Yeah about 30 kilometers a day. So walking about 30 kilometers per day, which is a lot. That's a lot. Every day for 30 days, and each day walking 30 kilometers with a backpack because you have to carry everything. You know, you have to carry all your clothes. You have to carry some food. It goes through towns, so we don't have, it's not, it's not like being in the mountains, but you still have to carry a lot of stuff. You know, you need to carry a sleeping bag because Places where you stay often do not have blankets. Even you get a bed, but no blanket. So you got to carry a, a backpack, and so you're carrying weight on your shoulders, and you're walking 30 kilometers a day. Um, so starting soon, actually, we'll start building up. You know, continue going to the gym, getting stronger in the legs, and building my body strength, and then start doing a lot of walking and walking with a backpack, with a heavy backpack. So when I'm in San Francisco, I'll practice walking up and down the hills and walking around. I will encourage Joe to start training and you know, getting stronger also. And hopefully by spring of 2015,
spring of next year when we plan to do it, uh, hopefully we'll be in very good shape and ready for all those miles, all those kilometers. So that'll be a cool experience. Looking forward to it. If you live in Spain or Europe and you want to come visit us while we're walking, <laughs> feel free. It'll be fun. All right. Um, now, one more thing about this sort of international life or just adventures. Um, this, um, this Camino adventure that Joe has proposed has kind of awakened in me my love of hiking and backpacking in general. Uh, when I lived in Georgia in the United States, oh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years ago, I used to uh, backpack in the mountains a lot. Uh, I, my dog and I would go hiking on the trails and you know for three, four days and just with a backpack and my dog and we'd hike into the mountains and then find somewhere we'd camp and we'd hike some more, camp again, you know, for, for a few days usually and it was a great experience. I loved it. I just love getting out in nature like that. So I plan to start doing that uh, again. Uh, so that I can, you know, get, get it's just such a healing, rejuvenating, uh, refreshing experience to be out in the mountains like that, away from all civilization or most civilizations. I love it. So planning to start doing that a lot more too. Uh, just getting a backpack and going into the mountains by myself, or hopefully with my wife Tomoe, and uh, hopefully Joe will join me, and maybe Kristen too, so we can have some backpacking trips. As part of that, I'm also interested in start to take some wilderness survival courses. Because um, backpacking in the western part of America is a little more dangerous than in the east. So when I lived in the east, in Georgia, North Carolina, sea, backpacking really was not very dangerous. Um, the weather is more predictable, and there are some bears, but they're black bears, which are smaller and less aggressive. I never had, I never even saw a black bear in all my times hiking. Uh, they have a few poisonous snakes, which I have seen camping, but again, nothing too terrible. Uh, just in general, it's just a, it's just a, uh, it's less dangerous that because uh, the mountains are much smaller and lower, so all the weather, everything's more predictable in the east coast of the United States for camping and hiking. But in the West Coast, you know, in the California Sierra Mountains where I plan to do some hiking, uh, and uh, certainly in the Rockies and, and, and other places in the West, it's a little more dangerous because, number one, the mountains are higher. And that means the weather can be less predictable, a little more dangerous. For example, you might be hiking in the springtime and suddenly a big snowstorm comes, you know. It's not... Usual, but it can happen. Uh, so these kind of unexpected uh, bad weather storms can happen uh, more in the West, and they can be a lot harsher and more dangerous. Uh, another thing is the wildlife is more dangerous in the West Coast, the West half, the West part of the United States, uh, because they still have black bears, but in some places they also have grizzly bears, which are larger, much more aggressive, and much more dangerous. Uh, and then they have mountain lions, which have killed people before. They, they're they kind of panthers, you know, and they, they've uh, attacked people, especially people who are alone. So just got to be a little more careful. It's not nothing to be too afraid of. It's just uh, um, I just want to be prepared, though, so I'm going to take a few wilderness survival courses just so I'm a little more prepared. So if some strange weather happens, if I lost my backpack, I could still survive and get out of the wilderness. And also know how to deal with some of the uh, more dangerous things, like such as like a grizzly bear. Just know what to do if you see a grizzly bear. So those are my adventures, the Camino, and going into the mountains. And I'll talk more about these when I do when I do them. And as they get closer, I'll talk about my training. Maybe I'll get Joe on the show, and he and I can talk about what we're planning. All right, let's see if we can get Barbell on the show now. So, Barbell, if you're watching, I sent you an invitation on Google Plus. So let me try. So check your Google Plus, Barbell, because you should see somewhere on your Google Plus 
page, you should see an invitation to a Hangout. But I will also send... So I, I sent it to you. Yeah, it's saying Verbell. And you're, you're following me on Google Plus, Verbell. And I sent you the invitation, so it's probably showing up on your Google Plus. Just in case, let me check. I apologize, these are just some of the little technical problems we have sometimes. Dealing, doing everything ourselves on the internet. Well, the great thing is, of course, that I can talk to you live like this. It's fantastic. Kind of cool, right? And we can have guests and everything. So let me, uh, let me just do a little search. Uh, let's see if we can. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I am here now. Okay. So Barbell, see if, see if you can try to check your Google Plus account. That's the key thing. You should see it. Your send you another invitation. Yep, you're following me. My personal G Google Plus. I'm sending it here to your Google Plus, and that should be. I'm sending the invitation now. Invitation just sent. So, Bear Bell, if you're watching, answer the invitation. Check your Google Plus account. Okay, well, while we try to do that, I'll start answering your Twitter questions. Twitter questions, it's question time! Woohoo! All right. Um, on Twitter, I will answer your questions. So I will be reading my Twitter now. So it's just twitter.com slash AJ Hogue, A J H O G E. That's my Twitter. So follow me on Twitter, and then you can send a, just, you know, the at. If you send to Twitter, just put the at sign, the A with the circle, and then A-J-H-O-G-E, at A-J Hogue, and then ask your question. I can't answer every question because there are too many coming in too fast, but I'll answer as many as I can. So let me read this and see what we can find. All right, Twitter question time. Twitter question time. Do, 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 do. Okay. Hmm. Bike. <laughs> okay, so here's a here's a this is more of a comment, not a question, from uh, Yevgeny Yevgeny, um, who I guess he's commenting about my saying my comments about the bears, the grizzly bears. He says you can buy a gun. He's joking, but <laughs> yeah, maybe. Actually, here's the thing about grizzly bears. I've heard stories that of grizzly bears um, being shot and but nothing happening to them. Like basically. Uh, them attacking hunters or attacking people and getting shot by probably by pistols and the grizzly bear just keeps coming and attacks and kills the person anyway so um, uh, oh good 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 okay let's see I think oh no 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 oh all right hopefully um so sorry I'm a bear bell was trying to join She's got to accept my invitation, so hopefully this will work. Um, so anyway, so this, this, the bears just keep coming. So the, the grizzly bears are tough. They're these big animals. So um, actually what is recommended, the, the real recommendation is something called bear spray, and it's pepper spray. You know, there's a the spray for self-defense. Some women and men carry it, and you, shh, you can spray it in someone's face, and it burns. Well, they have a really big version of that for, for grizzly bears. And you carry it on your hip when you're hiking in bear country, bear areas. And if the bear charges at you, you got to somehow remain calm <laughs> and spray him in the face before he kills you. So bear spray. Mountain lions, uh, they attack you. Um, they tend to attack from behind when you're surprised. So the best defense against mountain lions uh, be with lots of people. Yeah, anyway, we'll see. All right, let's go to Twitter questions. So, Bear Bell, I'm seeing... Bear Bell, you actually need to answer my... Bear Bell's trying to invite me to a, a, a call. Uh, but Bear Bell actually needs to answer my invitation, because I... otherwise... Uh, Bear Bell is participating... Oh! Bear Bell is participating. Join. No, she has to join mine. I can't... She's trying to invite me to hers, but got to actually... She's got to join mine. Okay, let's go to the next question, and hopefully we'll get this worked out. Looks like we're almost ready to have Barbell on the show. Okay, 
Uh, our next Twitter question. Twitter questions. What do we got? Okay. Uh, oh, we got <laughs> the bear stories. I guess my bear story is interesting. Atma Om uh, says that you can pretend that you are dead. Uh, that is one strategy with grizzly bears that I've seen. Um, grizzlies are the big ones. So it depends on which kind of bear. The strategy is different, actually. A black bear, if the black bear attacks you, you are supposed to fight. You're supposed to kind of look big and be very aggressive with black bears. Rah! Keep, keep your hands big, throw rocks at them, do whatever you need to do uh, so that they, you know, will feel like you're big and strong. But with a grizzly bear, grizzly bears are fearless, pretty much. And uh, one thing you can do with a grizzly bear is drop to the ground and pretend you're dead. And uh, hopefully it won't eat you. If it's, if, it's, if it's hungry, if it's attacking you because it, you're, it's hungry, then, then it will kill you and eat you. If it's attacking you just to scare you away, then maybe it will leave you alone. So, uh, <laughs> Okay, bear survival on Effortless English. You never thought today you would learn how to survive a bear attack. <laughs> See, we have all kinds of extra information, not just English. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, uh, Maddie Molly uh, on Twitter asked, is it okay to listen to the American and British shows as a listener? Yeah, sure. You can listen to both American and British. You can mix them if you want to. Some people uh, prefer one accent or another. Uh, you know, obviously, people who are really focused on me and my lessons are, are getting North American English. Uh, however, if you want to understand British English, then you can even just supplement with some British listening, you know, some British English listening. That might be a British English TV show. Uh, that might be audiobooks that are read by someone with a British accent. Lots of different ways. You know, accents, people sometimes worry a lot about accents, and they get, oh, my God, oh, which one's better, oh, my God. Uh. But, you know, really, just need to relax about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, you know, just focus. If you know British English, it's very easy to learn American English. I mean, there's, there's just, it's very, very easy to learn the accent. You just got to listen to, do, do some listening to American English, and very quickly you'll understand the accent. And the same is also true if you learn American English mostly, and then you, for some reason, you need British English. Maybe you're going to go to England. And just spend a month and focus a lot on British English listening. You'll get the accent quite quickly. It's, 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 it's a minor thing. Okay, let's go to our next question. Twitter questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Maxi Ange19, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce Twitter names, but uh, says, I want to know what it mean. What, what does AJ mean? My name, AJ. Apple juice. No, that's what kids used to call me when I was in, a little kid. They would make fun of me and call me apple juice <laughs> or apple jacks. <laughs> so, AJ, uh, Alan J is my name. Alan J uh, is my re uh, full name. But my family always called me AJ. Even uh, from a baby, my parents called me AJ. I've always been AJ. Um, so, yeah. All right. Maya Glasher, number one, asks, what are your favorite sweets? Mm, Tamoy, what are my favorite sweets? Crystal. Ice cream. Chocolate. Chocolate. Yes. And uh, like little uh, cream puffs, right? Yeah. There you go. My favorite sweets, ice cream, chocolate, especially dark chocolate, and like a custard cream puffs. Mm. I try not to eat too many of them, but if those are my weaknesses. I don't know. It's terrible. Uh, okay, boy, some interesting questions this week. So I guess I think the la I think in the first three episodes we got all the kind of normal English questions that people ask me all the normal English questions because this month. People are asking me some very interesting personal questions. We've talked about bears. Now we've talked about uh, sweets and desserts. And here's a question. AJ, have you ever gone to the sea? So I'm not sure what that means exactly. This is from Ghana 210. I mean, I'm not sure if that means, like, have I ever had a job where I've worked on a ship? Or just have I sailed before on a boat? Or have I been to the ocean? I've certainly been to the ocean. I'm a scuba diver. 
So uh, my wife and I both scuba dive. So do Kristen and Joe, in fact, our friends Kristen and Joe. So I've definitely have been diving out in the ocean. And, uh, I also kite surf. So I definitely do that. Um, but I've never had a job where I've been, you know, worked on a ship or anything. Um, never been in the Navy, nothing like that. Okay. Um, Let's keep going. All right. Uh, Milky Way, our, our VIP members, Milky Way, uh, says, I want you to talk about the effect of culture on the importance of learning English. Okay, I'll, this this is uh, especially important for pronunciation. I think I mentioned it in uh, one of the past episodes, uh, the effect of culture. So... Culture can affect pronunciation, uh, basically cultural identity. What, what, what we found is that with children, they, I, I talked about this last week, uh, children easily learn to speak with a native accent, meaning that if you bring a child from any country, you know, from Africa, Asia, it doesn't matter, bring them to the United States, the child will learn to speak with a perfect American accent, North American accent. However, if you bring an adult from one of those countries, usually, almost always, they will have an accent, a foreign accent. They will keep some accent from their home country. And then the question is, why? Why? What, what's, why has the child learned to get this, the, the, the perfect accent and the adult does not? There's, there's a lot of research and there's no exact answer yet, but what I believe and what uh, Stephen Krashen believes, and some other researchers, is that the reason is cultural, cultural identity. It's because the adult has a stronger identity, a stronger connection to their home culture. It's hard for the adult to let go of their home country. Let's say they come from Japan. Japanese adult comes to America. Even if they learn to speak English very, very well, still in their mind, they have this identity, this thought, this belief, I am Japanese, I'm Japanese, I'm Japanese. And because of that, they can't let go completely of, of this, this thought, this identity. Because of that, they actually keep a little bit of that Japanese accent. And some of this is happening deep in their brain. Maybe they're not even thinking about it consciously. But unconsciously, they, they feel strange sounding like an American. Somewhere in their psychology, they believe that, oh, I cannot sound exactly like an American because that means then I'm not Japanese anymore. Now I'm an American. And so the adults hold on to the old culture. Children, totally the opposite, right? Children come and immediately they want to fit in with the new culture. They want to connect. That Japanese child will come to America. They want to be like the American children. They don't want to be foreign. They don't want to be different. They want to sound exactly like their friends do, their American friends. And so they will develop an American accent. They will fairly quickly let go of this men mental idea, I'm Japanese, I'm Japanese, I'm not American. And they'll be able to actually then uh, be American. In their mind, in their feeling, they'll be American and they'll be Japanese. They'll, be able to speak both at the same time with perfect accents. So I think that's the main thing about culture. Otherwise, not a big deal. You know, I think the the thing that adults need to learn is just to is when they learn English, is just to let go of their own culture. And I know it's not easy, but you just have to think, okay, I'm learning English, so I have this English identity, this American identity, and I'm going to just be open to it. Okay, I don't. If you're Japanese, you, when you speak English, don't be Japanese. You know, be American. Have have it a think. Try to think more like an American. Act more like an American. Talk more like an American. Doesn't matter if you're Mexican or or Chinese or Japanese or whatever. Doesn't matter. And if you know, I think for most adults, it, it is difficult to do that completely. But do the best you can if it's important to you to have that uh, that accent. 
Okay. Good question. Oh, so many questions. Here we go. Let's see. So, yeah, Bear Bell's still not showing. So, Bear Bell, I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll try again in the next episode, and we'll actually need to practice this and see if we can uh, uh, figure it out. So, unfortunately, we'll have our guest next time. Maybe next week when I'm in uh, Thailand or the following week if I have to skip it. Okay, so I'll just keep answering questions. This was your favorite part anyway, so we'll just do lots of questions, and we'll have our guest next time. Oh, okay, so the question is, have you ever gone to sea all alone, like a traveler? Oh, like just sailing by myself. No, I haven't. So this is a follow-up question from Ghana210. Uh, have you ever gone to sea all alone, like a traveler? No, I've never done that. I never sailed alone. Um, maybe. Maybe someday. Who knows? I've certainly hiked alone in the mountains plenty of times. Okay, let's go... Okay, Mered Yared. Okay, I'm going to try Bear Bell again while we're doing this. Okay. Do, 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 do. Bear Bell. Boom. Boom. Invite. Okay, so Mered Yared asks, can you please tell us more on the upcoming courses, especially the public speaking course, your expectations from the course? Okay. So the public speaking course uh, will be available, I think it looks like March. As usual, there are delays. So sometime maybe in late March, maybe April, uh, the public speaking course will be available. We're calling it English Presentations Power. And it's myself and my friend Aaron have made this course. Now, this course is designed just to help you be a, a great public speaker. You know, we specifically we're making it for people who are not native English speakers, people who are learning English. But really, ninety-five percent of the ideas will also work in your own language. So, you'll be learning some English, yes, but mostly this is these are presentation ideas that will work in any language. Now, what we're focusing on is the psychology and the emotions. Why? There are a lot of presentation courses and books that focus on organization, how to organize your speech. You know, uh, first you give an introduction, then you do this, then you do this. Um, we talk about that some, but you know, quite honestly, that's not the problem. That's not the big challenge of public speaking. If you can write a paper in an organized way, then you can certainly make an outline for a speech in an organized way. It's not that difficult. What's difficult, as you know, is the emotion. It's, the, it's, the, it's all that fear and nervousness of standing in front of this big group of people and they're all looking at you, listening to everything you say, watching every move you make. And that scares a lot of people, whether it's 20 or 30 people or 100 or 500 or 1,000 or more. So what usually happens is before a speech, people start getting nervous, right? Sometimes people get nervous weeks and weeks before a speech. Sometimes it's just before they start. Sometimes it's when they step out onto the stage, and then suddenly they feel nervous. And then what happens when you feel nervous? You all know heart, your heart beats faster. Breathing gets faster and more shallow. Uh, and then sometimes people shake, you know? Um, and then what happens with your mind, this is the worst part, is your mind then kind of gets uh, unclear, you know, you're, you, you, it's hard for you to remember things, and typically what this means is that when most people give a presentation, it's not very good. Some people will go really, really fast because they're nervous, and it's too fast, and so it's not a very good presentation. Some people will forget important things. Some people will uh, 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 kind of stutter, uh, 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 and they just don't sound very confident or very good. Um, some people, we talk about this a lot in the course, all the mistakes people make. Some people will try to read, you know, they have slides, and they'll just read their slides because it makes them feel less nervous so they don't have to remember, they don't have to stand and look at the audience. They can instead 
have slides and just read the slides. Maybe you've seen some of these presentations. They're terrible. Oh, my God. Those are the most boring to me. I hate those. If someone starts reading slides to me, I, I want to walk out. Sometimes I do walk out. Um, I understand why they're doing it. They're nervous or they're just boring. <laughs> I don't know. One of those reasons. <laughs> so anyway, you don't want to do any of that. Thing. What you want to do is feel strong and confident. You want to step onto that stage. You want to look directly at your audience as you're speaking. And you want to capture and hold their attention. So the whole time you're speaking, they're watching and listening and interested. And that's what this course is about. So we teach you how to deal with all these nervous feelings and change them into power and confidence. And how to practice and train so every time you give a public speech, you're strong and confident and you do a great job. That's what the course is about. It'll be available in a couple months. All right. All right, so here's another non-English question. Why not? Uh, Yevgeny E. is interested in football. <laughs> so he's been a, he, uh, he or she is asking about my favorite football teams and my father's. So he's really, uh, he or she is really interested in uh, USA football. Okay, so let me, okay, I'll explain American football. So as you all know, in America we like to do everything differently. Most of the world football is played with your feet. You kick the ball around, and it's quite popular everywhere. And we call it soccer. We call that soccer. In America, I'm not sure about Canada. Yeah, but definitely in the United States. Uh, when we say football, we, we mean American football. Uh, I think some people call it gridiron. Americans never use gridiron. We say football. And that's the thing with the big guys. They got the pads and the helmets and, you know. That is the most popular sport in the United States. And uh, there are actually two, two leagues or two levels of American football. One is college and one is professional. And they're both very, very, very popular. Uh, college football has also many levels. There's the top level, the biggest universities. And this is very popular. And they're, you know, they, they're different, actually, different leagues in different parts of the country. It's kind of complicated, actually. <laughs> but basically, it, eventually, they have a national champion for college football. And this just recently happened, and it was Florida State University became the national champions this year. Then professional, of course, there's a professional league, and uh, they're still playing now. There's no champion yet. There are four teams left. There's a tournament now happening from the professional league. Four, four teams left. They're playing uh, today, actually. And at the end of this, there will be two teams left. They will play in the Super Bowl to determine the champion. So, favorite football teams. Okay, so you have to say uh, my favorite college team, right? Remember, there are two. There's, there's university or there's college football and, Ameri and a professional. My favorite college team is my own university, the University of Georgia, the Georgia Bulldogs. That is also my father's favorite team. My father likes college football. He doesn't really care about professional so much. He likes college football. And because he lives in Georgia, because I went to the University of Georgia, uh, the Georgia team is his favorite and also mine. Professional football, uh, my dad he doesn't care so much. I like uh, a team called the Miami Dolphins, who are not very good. <laughs> so there you go. There's your quick um, lesson on American football. Okay, good. Um, there's another interesting... God, we've got lots of interesting questions this time. Quite different than... Uh, than the last few episodes. There, there are more variety this time. I like it. It's great. Because I usually get asked the exact same questions all the time. So thank you. Okay, so Verta Etu is asking, um, is being an exchange student in the United States really good for my English skills? I am now in high school. Yes. Super good. Uh, probably the best thing you could do for your English would be to be an exchange student in an American high school. I've met a few. Uh, I've met some uh, uh, in Thailand. I've met ex people who were exchange students, and in Japan I have. So most Japanese people speak with Japanese accents. You know, it's quite strong. 
But I've met a few Japanese people, certainly one I can remember recently, who had just really fantastic accent, and I, and I, immediately could I knew something was different. So I finally I said, why why is your English so good? Why your your accent's perfect? And they said, oh, when I was younger, I was an exchange student in the United States when I was in high school. Aha. So yeah, that's it's great, you know. Um, so that's definitely something you can do. I hope you know, pick a good, do some research, and hopefully find a nice school where people are nice. Some American high schools are horrible, honestly. Some of, but some of them, like in maybe smaller towns, are are quite nice. Um, yeah, depends on your personality, but but in terms of English, yes, being an exchange student, wow, it would be great. You'll make a lot of, you know, American friends, and you'll be speaking English to them all the time. Your accent, your English, everything, will increase in a huge way during that year. I highly recommend it. All right, let's keep going with the questions, shall we? All right. Oh, Barbell! Barbell's on! Woo! We got her! Okay. Da -da -da. Barbell is on. One second. Oh, my God. I think we finally got it. Okay, let's see if we can unmute. Barbell, I think you need to unmute. There's a button there that probably says mute uh, on your computer, so try to unmute it. Try. Okay, wait. We wanna... All right, trying to... I think we almost got it. Okay, so can't hear you. Still cannot hear you. Unfortunately, I can't seem to unmute. Yeah, Bear Bell, right now you're muted, so you need to, on your computer, there's a little microphone symbol. Click that symbol, and that should unmute you. Let's see, hopefully. Okay, we're almost here. We almost got our guests. This is great. Okay, Bear Bell, you need to click the little microphone symbol on your computer. Unmute yourself so we can hear you. Still cannot hear, and I cannot seem to do it myself, so she has to do it. Mm. Unmute yourself, Bear Bell. Okay, so I'll keep talking, and hopefully she'll get to unmute herself. Um. Nope, still can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Hello, hello, hello. You're still muted. Hmm. Okay. All right, we'll try it. I think, ah, 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 I think she's here. I think she's here. Hello, hello. Show and broadcast. Come on. Hello? Almost. Come on, we're almost here. Come on. Yes, I think you're here. Fair bell. Yes. Yay! I'm here. Yes, I can hear you finally. Yay! You can hear me. Can you see? Can you see me too? I can see you too. Oh, I'm so excited. Wow, well, AJ, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the inconvenience. No, wow, it's okay. It's okay. That is technology. I'm so, 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 so excited. I tried it and I tried it. But you will send the invitation to my to the other email address, to, to Andeto, and I always waited on the on Gmail. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I had problems with my dad last week too because... Uh, oh well, I, we finally figured it out. I'm I'm so glad <laughs> that I that I yeah now I'm very excited to know. Okay, <laughs> but nice to see you. Yeah, yeah nice to see you too. <laughs> really, Welcome. Really, really good. Deep breathing. A moment. A moment. Okay. I have switched oh. on the light and the other light on. It better, yes. Okay, A that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Better. Whew, deep breathing. Shoulders back. Chin up, chest up. <laughs> <laughs> deep so how are you? And a big smile on our face. Mm. 
<laughs> so, yeah. So, how are you? Ah, fine. <laughs> now I feel better. Now I'm satisfied, yes, that we succeeded oh, in very talking. Good. I'm so pleased to be talking with you. Okay. Yeah. Shall I talk a little bit about my success? Please, you just talk. I'm going to stay quiet so that everyone can see your video. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I've been a member of Effortless English for five years. Wow, that's a long time. Yes, five really? years. Wow, yeah, it's fantastic. amazing. Yes. yes, really. And yeah, I'm telling you a little bit uh, in a, in a briefly how it all began, if you want. Mm -hmm. interesting. Yes. Uh, let's get the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah. um, I was looking for a pen pen, for a pen friend. While I was surfing the internet, I immediately um, discovered an advertisement on the right side of my um, screen. And it showed a picture. It was yours. With an invitation to a free email English course. Of course, yes. I was very, very surprised, and I was extremely um, curious. Of course, I clicked on, and giving in my email address. And lo and behold, the next day I could download the first of the seven rules of effortless English. Amazing. I was very, very, very uh, satisfied about what you're talking and so on. And so it happens that I, uh, it was a given that I ordered your course. Um, I had uh, the possibility to download all the lessons and I could learn day by day and listen to the lessons. It was very, so exciting. Three months later, another course aroused my interest. And it was uh, the real English course, real English. Oh. And I couldn't imagine what does it mean, real English. I always thought English is English. And what's <laughs> the difference in real English and English? I couldn't imagine that, yes? But uh, after ordering the, the, the lessons, I was very surprised because I um, heard, heard for the first time real English conversations. And this was so good. Uh, I haven't found these conversations or what, in general, this, these real English in textbooks. The lessons are full of idioms and slang, and that was wonderful. I hope that you are, um, that you are, um, uh, co-workers uh, or your other coaches, Christine and, and Joe, uh, were on the session, but they aren't here, yes? It's too early in San Francisco. It's 6 a.m. Uh, so. uh, yeah, it's a pity. Yeah, it's a pity. Okay. Say hello um, uh, um, to them for me. Okay. Ah. Yeah. So, uh, that was uh, real English. And now I had two, two lessons, yes? Um, so effortless English lessons and the real English lessons. But it wasn't enough. My powerful desire to learn English grew and grew. And it took a not long time. One year later, you, are, you published your Power English lessons. Wow, that was, I must say, your masterpiece indeed. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, because you said that um, uh, these Power English lessons, these were focused on the psychology psychology of learning and the psychology of success and that was it what I was interested in very very mm -hmm. very good I learned a lot of these lessons for yeah I never forget shoulders back chin up uh, yeah <laughs> chest up eyes up and pick a put a big smile on your face great fantastic and I have to say it works uh, I even have to pay attention that I don't look at people too long with a smile on my face <laughs> because <laughs> they could take it in a wrong way. <laughs> but it was good, very good. So after um, and use um, and it is said that yeah, psychology and emotions are indeed eighty percent of our success. And that is that is that is real. 
Yes. So, power English lessons, effortless English lessons, real English lessons, and one year later, in October 2009, you published your VIP program. VIP stands uh, actually for very important persons, but you know, we are all very important persons, everyone is unique, uh, but uh, because we, we didn't want to um, so normal, we are special persons. We changed this abbreviation VIP into uh, vision, inspiration, and persistence. Vision, you know, you have mentioned it, stands for our vision, has yes, uh, to follow our, our, our goal, to bring uh, confidence, happiness, and vitality to people. Inspiration, we are inspired by our goal, by our goal, by our vision, by our aim, yes. And of course, persistence will never give up. We keep on going. Yes, mm -hmm. that is very, very great. And yeah, this um, VIP lessons, I like them very much because we get every month we, we, we get a new lesson and we never know what to expect. It's, that, it's great. Uh, the VIP lesson, these are indeed a, a service leadership. Uh, it's about service leadership. In service leadership, that is also my field. Yeah? Service leadership, it's about gratitude and um, contribution. And your lessons, they are mainly focused on, I, I, let me talk with um, Tony Robbins' words, uh, to uh, the science of achievement and the, um, and the uh, art of fulfillment. And this is what our lessons are, yes? Mm -hmm. Tony mentioned, uh, Tony Robbins mentioned these two parts in his speeches and you um, taught us uh, these parts in your lessons. Very, very great. Uh, I have to say that our VIP lessons helped me uh, to get another point of view. A point of, yeah, to get, uh, another point of view, I, I can say that I live more consciously. Uh, I didn't uh, use... Um, to think uh, a lot about a lot of part of leadership, because uh, actually I lived it. I lived it really without thinking about it. I was a leader all the time, yes. But now with with that knowledge, what we um, that we get by you, um, I can live more consciously. Of course, we had very 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 uh, good topics. Um, for example, uh, it begins with comfort zone. Comfort zone, my favorite topic. It was the first one, it's mm -hmm. the favorite topic. Yes, we have to push ourselves outside our comfort zone to grow. Very, very good. And the next, also my favorite topic is energy triangle. Triangle, energy triangle. Yes, body and mind have to be balanced, have to form a, a unit. You are what you eat and what you eat you, is walking and talking tomorrow. Excellent, and mm -hmm. I love it. I like it and I love it. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> the another lessons were, for example, accountability. You taught us that we are um, responsible, accountable for ourselves. It's great, fantastic. And also, uh, let's uh, talk about, for example, uncertainty. Yes, if we have to be, uh, if we have to uh, be, un uh, if we have to ac acknowledge uncertain. Um, we can live better, the quality of our life will be better, of course. Other topics were, for example, problems, decisiveness, anger, um, yeah, uh, feedback, the dip, and so on and so further. And the best <laughs> is yet to come, and <laughs> is yet to come, I think. And mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to other lessons. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, what I want to see also, yes, I very uh, appreciate that you also um, that you also introduced us introduced to us uh, several leaders. For example, Jim Rohn, um, Brian Tracy, uh, Six Sigla, Tony Robbins, and so on, and also their books. And so we can we could broaden our horizon. Very very good, excellent. I'm very thankful for this. And I'm also thankful for, um, for example, that you, for, um, 
that you acknowledge also other English teachers on the internet. You know the internet is full of English teachers. Mm. Um, more and more. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I am so happy that you also appreciate other English teachers. For example, uh, Steve Kaufmann, um, Steve Borg. Uh, yeah, it's the name. And last but not least, get now nowadays, um, Aaron Campbell, with whom you uh, create have created the presentation lessons. I'm very excited to getting them. Really, really good. I'm very proud of you that you, uh, yeah, I can say it, face the, co <laughs> the competition. <laughs> face <laughs> <up> the competition. <laughs> yeah, it's, an, it's, it's, an, it's, it's very, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's very, 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 very good. Yeah, and that's what I like so much. Um, you choose, for example, for, for your topics, for your lessons, topics who are related to, um, to leadership. And uh, we can, uh, as I said, um, to develop ourselves more. Yes, of course. Um, I have, I am very interested in quotations. And I, um, please let me tell a, a quotation I, I read by. <laughs> A little bit for laughing, yes. It's okay. a little joke, but I was, I it cracked me up. It cracked me up when I read it. It's about the seventh president, president of Pennsylvania. Hmm. Um, his name is the seventh president of of Pennsylvania. Uh, no, okay, I I forget. But it's about the seventh, uh, and he said he said. <laughs> uh, fish and fish and visit and visitors stink in three in three days. What was that? I'm sorry. One more time. Fish and visitors stink in three days. A stink in three days. <laughs> he said it. He said it's the the president of Pennsylvania. <laughs> but that's only only a joke. <laughs> but it's written on the internet, and I read it. It cracked me up. It cracked me up. But now a serious, a serious book by by him, and he said, um, "Tell me, and I forget. Teach me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I learn." And that's what I very, very appreciate. Yes? Mm. Of me and I remember. And that's what you do, what you are doing. Yes, and I am very, very thankful for you because you involve us and we all learn together with you. That is unique. And okay. a, a big thank you to you, of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I, I have uh, another another quote by Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, by Mahatma Gandhi, and he's he's taught um, our beliefs become our words. Mm -hmm. No, our beliefs become our our thoughts. Our thoughts become our words. Our words become our actions, and our actions become our values, and our values become our destiny and that's it that's it the destiny our destiny to bring uh, confidence happiness vitality to people in all over the world and our mission let's end in that way yeah always a big big thank you to you Thank you so much. Shall Thank I you so much. Yeah. Wow, very, I'm, glad, very I'm glad we finally got you on. That's great. I'm, I'm thank you. <laughs> no, you are great. You are great. I remember our meeting in Barcelona last year, and yeah. it's so nice yeah, to get to know a, um, a person, our leader in, in person. That's, that makes a difference, of course. I agree. I agree. That was fantastic. I loved. Uh, it was great meeting you in Barcelona. You know, face to face is. Uh, <laughs> it, this, this is this is nice, but uh, it's it's even better face to face, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and um, maybe some words about leader. Uh, how how should be a leader? For example, in my opinion, a leader a leader should be should have a positive attitude. Positive attitude. 
I think we all, we, we, I mean, we permanent members have a positive attitude and mm -hmm. we leader has to, to listen and to communicate effectively and um, we leaders, we encourage other people to con contribute, which is a very, uh, yeah, mm. a tricky word, and above all, we uh, have to be passionate, and mm. I am very passionate. We are your leaders, we all are leaders, and we, I hope, yeah, we can make a difference, we can make the world better. Oh, thank you, Barbo. Thank you for being such a passionate leader in our program, and and you know you're inspiring a lot of our other members and our crew, everybody out there. So thank you so much. Thank you. It, yeah, was, it was great. It was great talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I wish you had to see you later. Bye. Okay. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad we got. I'm glad we got it to work. <laughs> bye. Bye. Oh, bye. bye. Uh, Okay, fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad we got that to work. Ah, whew. Boy, this technology stuff. So my dad, it was like, uh, he came on late last week because I told him the wrong time. And uh, uh, with uh, Julia, there were a few little problems before we finally got on. And then with Barbell, we had a few problems here. But we get them solved. Eventually, I'll figure all this stuff out. And... Uh, It'll get easier, but so great, so great to hear from Barbell. So Barbell has been five years in effortless English, a long time, and she's uh, she's just super active. So anyone who's in our VIP program already knows her because she's on our VIP um, site all the time. Uh, probably the probably our most active commenter, meaning when when a VIP member adds a comment uh, or posts something. You know, she's she's almost always the first person to comment, and she's always you know giving encouragement and giving positive comments, and uh, yeah. so fantastic. Um, so this this is really what makes English special, in my opinion. Barbell brought up you know the competition. Um, when I first started Effortless English, you know, I was I was a little, a little nervous about competition, uh, basically because my family depended on it, Tomoe and I. Uh, our business, but now I'm pretty relaxed about it because uh, I really don't even think about. I really don't think, oh, I have competition anymore, because uh, we have a community, and it's not just me. And so um, I really feel like more like we have this community that's growing and growing and developing, and we're not really commute. We're not competing with anyone. We're just working to achieve our our mission, and. At this point, you know what what makes Effortless English special now are the the the, the members like Barbell, like Julia, like several others I will invite on to our show, uh, and like ev and all of you who are listening to this now, the people on Twitter who are always you know sending me all these positive, wonderful comments, people who leave all these great comments on our website. You know, one thing that's super special is that. You will not find this online very much. This is very, very unusual. You know, go go to some um, forum, go to some website, uh, some somewhere else. Doesn't any topic, English or anything. And just start reading comments. Almost always, when you find a website and you read the comments, many of them will be very negative. People will be insulting each other. Uh, it's just, it's horrible. It's terrible. Um, and that's unfortunately quite normal online. Never, I won't say never, but almost never happens in our effortless English community. If it does happen, I get rid of them. So that's one reason it doesn't happen. But I, I, I almost never need to do anything. You know, I, I, we, we do moderate our comments for that reason, but almost never. It almost never happens that someone writes something negative or insulting. Uh, instead, it's almost always encouragement. People saying nice things to each other, encouraging other people, giving them answers. You know, many of our members, like Barbell, uh, they will answer uh, other members' questions before I do. You know, if someone asks, oh, I'm having a problem downloading this, or I'm having a problem with something, other members will answer those questions for them and help them, usually better than I can, in fact, because, you know, I don't download the lessons. I don't. I make them, but I don't. I'm not usually actually, you know, downloading things onto a phone or something. It's 
uh, I don't need to. So the other members are doing that, and so they actually help to solve the problems usually faster than I do. Or when people have you know worries or concerns or they're frustrated, then it's the other members who are supporting them all the time. That's what's special about our mission and our community, and it's gone much bigger than just me now. And that's why it's it's really has become something special, the Effortless English community. And I, my job now, I see my job now is, is, is protecting that, encouraging that and protecting it. So uh, I protect it. That means if someone does come in and they're really negative or insulting, boom, my job is to be tough and get rid of them. Uh, and I've had to do it a few times, not very much, but a few times, and I have done it. <laughs> uh, but that's important because, you know, just a, one or two really negative people can really destroy a community. I see it online all the time, and that's why I'm very tough about that. But the other thing I do, which is what I usually, mostly do, is just to encourage it. You know, I, in our VIP program, I just try to give lots of interesting, positive uh, topics that are useful in life uh, here, same thing. Uh, in, really in everything we do, and to encourage people and remind them about the mission, remind them about the code, remind them about our values. Just keep, just keep talking about it and reminding you guys, and then you guys are doing the rest, and that's fantastic. And we're together building this very uh, powerful, positive force in the world, and that's what's special for me, I believe. All right, we're going long today, but why not? I'm about. To, we may skip next week because of. Uh, uh, my travels, so uh, I'll go longer today. You don't do you mind, Tamoli Chan? It's okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to answer a few more questions, and then we'll be done for today. Ha! -ha! And Mishoff uh, has got a great comment on Twitter, so I've got to respond to this. Hi, um, I'm a fan of Led Zeppelin. Yes. <laughs> So Mishav, on Twitter again, you can make comments or ask questions on Twitter. I'll take a few more before we finish. Uh, yes, uh, me too. I love Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin's probably my favorite band. If I had to choose a uh, favorite band, it would be uh, Led Zeppelin or the Beatles, I, I guess. Um, Beatles were the first band I really loved when I was in middle school, and then when I was in high school, really started to love Led Zeppelin. Still love Led Zeppelin there. I believe they're the greatest rock band ever. But a lot of other people agree, so I know it's not just me. Love Zeppelin. Lo I like lots of music, but especially Zepp. Um, oh, yeah, Benjamin Franklin. So, yeah, uh, Bear Bell just uh, mentioned the person, the quotes. She was giving the qu quotes about learning. You know, if you, I, I can't remember the exact quote. It's kind of a famous quote, but basically, if you teach someone something, they'll remember it, but if you involve them, then they it, then they really learn to do it, right? It's, it's when people are involved, when they're active in their learning, that's the best learning. It was Benjamin Franklin who said that. Uh, who was famous American uh, back from our early history in the United States. <laughs> Here's a good question. Ghana two ten again. Uh, oh, these are I love it. These are these these um. These are good questions. They're, they're interesting this week. Enjoyable. Uh, you are a journalist. Why don't you like journalism? Aha. First of all, I wouldn't call myself a journalist. I uh, My first degree and undergraduate degree was in journalism. That's probably why I don't like journalism, because I got a job, and I got to see on the inside how corrupt journalism is and how most of it's lies and propaganda. I just, that's, that's what I saw. And it's true in newspapers, it's in television, oh my god, it's even worse. So you got to be really careful, and just my opinion, and, and I'm not even talking about, you know, conservative or liberal or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. You just, you can't just blindly trust what you're seeing on television, on the news, because somebody, some corporation usually, with lots of money, they have an agenda, they have a purpose for what they're showing you. You know, in any story on the news, they're only showing you a little tiny bit of that story. Which part they choose depends on what they want you to think. So it's that's why you have to be uh, very careful about journalism, and it's good to dig around and on the internet and other places and to get your information from lots of sources. And you know, personal direct experience is the best way to know something. Uh, yeah, 
Okay, so Nasa Sadula says, by the way, your beard looks good on you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, oh, and then and then Max uh, Gutierre wants to uh, go. is it? Gualtieri wants to know uh, uh, Barabel's Twitter, and I'll give that to you in a second. So first of all, my beard. A comment about my beard. So this this beard. <laughs> Uh, is basically, uh, this is what I do sometimes in the winter when it's cold and dark and I'm indoors all the time. I get a little lazy about shaving and so I get a little beard. Now I'm going to Thailand in a couple of days and I'll be shaving in Thailand. Uh, when this when the warm weather comes, I shave. So I'll probably be, next time you see me, I'll be at least partially shaved again. I'm so looking forward to the sun and warm weather of Thailand. Fantastic. Okay, uh, and let me give you. I'm going on Twitter right now. I will give you. I'm going to. Uh, re, I'll do a retweet of Barbell's Twitter, and then I'll actually just do a post real quick too. Okay, I'll put this on Twitter now. This is Barbell's Twitter, and it's Ondeto. It's her Twitter name. Follow her. Follow her. So it's uh, on on date O N D E T O. It's Barabelle's Twitter uh, Twitter account. So please follow Barabelle. And I just put it on Twitter. Okay, Alcimar Barbosa from Brazil says, "I'm watching you on the YouTube channel from Brazil. How can I talk to you?" Uh, so for the guest spots, I just invite people. So you have to. Kind of like a talk show, you know. So I invite guests to appear on the show. Um, I have two segments where I can possibly have guests. Uh, first segment I'm calling success stories or effortless English success. That's when I invite people onto uh, the show who have used effortless English for a while and they've had some success with uh, their English or with life or whatever. And right now I'm choosing mostly um, VIP members that I know who are very active in our community. And I've chosen the top two. Barbell and Julie, Julia are, are really probably our top two most active consistently. Uh, and but there there are many others that I'll have on the show. So that's the the best way. It's just to be. The, I, I will invite people on the show, uh, members and and students, crew, on the show who are just who are very active, who are showing leadership, and who have good success stories. You know that will inspire other members out there. Um, and then the other segment I have uh, for guests, th those will be native speakers. You know, uh, I had my father on last week. I wanted to have my mom this week, but her schedule uh, didn't work, and she doesn't even have internet in her home, <laughs> honestly. So uh, I don't know. Eventually, I'll invite more people on. My friends Kristen and Joe, I'll get them on the show. I'm going to San Francisco next month. We might need to change the time of this show, but... Uh, when I do, I'll, I'll have them on, and I'll have some more people on. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a good question, and then uh, I'll, I'll take two more questions, and then we're then we're finished for this week. Okay. Uh, Bay Ramanank, Twitter name, says, "Does your motivation sometimes go down? And when it happens, what do you do?" Yeah, of course, my motivation sometimes go down. This happens to everybody. You know. I, I don't know, maybe Tony Robbins is like super motivated all the time. That's kind of the feeling I get when I watch the guy. Um, but I don't know, because when I watch him, he's always performing. You know, he's on stage, or he's on a video, or he's an, on an audio. And, of course, when he's doing those things, he uh, has maximum energy and maximum motivation, just as I do when I make, when I record lessons, when I'm doing a video like this, when I'm on a stage, you know, I've got maximum motivation do things to make myself motivated. But other times in life, you know, my motivation drops, my energy drops. What do I do? Um, depends on the situation. In the past, I sometimes would get worried about it, but now I kind of know that I have a cycle. And I see it as something that's natural, so I just will... Usually I just let myself be lazy for a few days and just relax. I just change. For, so, for example, I'll give you an example. This just, just happened recently. Uh, uh, editing this AJ Live video, all this video from Vietnam, my event, and and before. It's a really big job. 
So it takes a lot of motivation to keep doing it, you know, day after day after day, keep editing. Well, I, I started uh, working on it. I was working on it really well. And then suddenly, um, maybe a week ago, uh, about maybe six or seven days ago, I just, uh, my motivation just dropped. I kind of just was kind of sick of doing it. And so instead of forcing myself, I just thought, okay, fine. I just put it to the side, and I focused on other things. I started, uh, uh, my friend Joe, Joe had contacted me about this Camino adventure, so I just decided, okay, I, I'm going to focus on that for a while. I started reading about backpacking and the, the Camino in, in Spain and um, uh, ultralight backpacking and hiking and all this stuff, and I started watching some TV shows about it and YouTube videos about outdoor survival, and I just let myself take a break from video editing for about five or six days. Just get my brain off of that. And then guess what happened? I, I found my my motivation returning. You know, and I knew it would, right? I didn't totally forget about the video. I knew I needed to do it, but I just told myself, I'm going to take a few days off. I'm going to take, you know, a week off. And then guess what? Today I suddenly found myself I, I in the morning I thought, you know, I'm ready to get back and start working on the video again. And that's what I did. I went to a coffee shop, I brought my computer, and I started editing the video again with kind of fresh energy. So I think when your motivation goes down for anything, uh, first of all, just take a break. Don't take a six-month break, but it doesn't matter what it is, English or anything, but you know, take a few days, take a week. Uh, if it gets too long, then you might break your good habits, and that's not good. So you know, it's kind of a, you have to find what works for you, but. I would, I would say generally three to five days, take a break and don't even think about it. Focus on something different. Sometimes it's good to get out and do physical things, um, whatever it is. And then at the end of that three to five day period, then come back and start working on whatever you're wanting to do again. And you might find that your energy is, is, has increased again. So that's a, that's a general recommendation. That's what I do. All right, let's take a look. What do we got? Okay. Please be careful in Thailand. There's uneasiness there. BZ Alexon says, yeah, no worries. First of all, I'm not going to Bangkok. I'm going to Chiang Mai in the north. As far as I know, uh, no big problems. And also, you know, yeah, I won't be walking around because people are throwing bombs at the protesters now, so that's not good. I love Thailand, so I hope all this gets worked out eventually. Okay, so Alsamar Barbosa, who asked about talking to me, is also a VIP member, and, you know, hopefully you'll be a guest one day, too. Get on our VIP social site, start getting active, Tell, talk more about your story, participate in some of the teleseminars we do, only for VIP members, and as I get to know you more, then uh, it's possible you, too, could be a guest on this show. All right, I think that's about it. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Okay, Gilmani, here's a good question. Gilmani, do you like to study languages? If yes, what about Arabic? Uh, honestly, no, I don't like... <laughs> I don't like studying languages. I don't. Um, this is probably something different about me uh, compared to uh, a lot of teachers out there on the Internet, especially. Especially someone like Steve Kaufman. In fact, this is probably the major difference between Steve Kaufman and I. Steve Kaufman is a language learner. Uh, um, Steve Kaufman from uh, Link, L-I-N-G-Q dot com. He's wonderful. Uh, he's, a, he's a linguist, and that's the title of his book, in fact, The Linguist. So he's someone who he just loves learning languages. He speaks, I don't know, eight, nine, ten languages. I don't know how many he speaks now because he keeps adding new ones. He, you know, he, at this point, he loves the process of learning languages. Uh, so for him, it's about language learning. Not really English specifically. In fact, not very, very much not English specifically. He, he's focused on many languages. Now, I am totally focused on English because, and for me, just learning a language I find boring. I find it extremely boring. Just learning vocabulary and grammar or whatever. Um, for me, what is interesting to me is is communication, ideas. 
international communication, international community, international travel, international culture. And so that's why, for me, English is my focus, number one, because it's my native language, but number two, because English is the international language right now. At this time in history, English is the international language of, you know, business, science, travel, etc. Basically everything. Uh, and so those are my interests. My interest is on, on the human cultural parts, not the language. The language is just a tool to me. It's just a tool. Um, so if, 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 you know, if there was a different world language, then I probably would be focused on learning it. But uh, as it is, I find that English is the most useful and most powerful one, and so my that's my focus. Okay. And I encourage that, by the way, in my teaching. Don't focus on the parts of the language. Don't focus so much on English, on just the words. How many words do I know? Oh, what's, you know, just a, memorizing a bunch of uh, vocabulary or grammar. That's not what makes English special or useful. That's boring. Focus on ideas that you can learn in English. Focus on the communication with other people in English. And you'll learn the words and the grammar while you do that. Okay, well, I guess that is the end this time. We had kind of a long one uh, this time, which is, I guess, good. As I said, get on my Twitter account. It's AJ Hogue is my Twitter um, address. So it's twitter.com slash A-J-H-O-G-E. And follow me on Twitter. I will announce uh, information about the next episode on Twitter. It might be next Sunday, but it might be two weeks from now, depending on my hotel in Thailand, the internet connection. So, again, let me just remind you of our code. We do the best we can. We do the right thing. We show each other we care. And our mission you know, to explore new opportunities for growth, to bring confidence, vitality, and happiness to people all over the world, to boldly go where we have never gone before. This is our mission, not just my mission. And uh, honestly, we need your help. I need your help. I encourage you, you know, you know, tell your friends and family about Effortless English and recruit them, but only recruit people who are positive, who will follow our code, who will like our mission. It's not for everybody, that's okay. You know, some people are a little more grumpy and negative, um, and maybe they wouldn't like, you know, what, what we're doing. That's fine, you don't need to invite them to Effortless English, don't tell them about it. Let them do what they're doing. But if you know people who are very you know, positive and enthusiastic, who kind of fit our values, then yes, please, please and, and tell them about Effortless English. That's how our mission grows from you. All right. I will see you next time in one or two weeks. Follow me on Twitter to uh, find out when the next episode is. So for now, I love you all. Mwah! Thank you so much, and see you next time. Bye for now, and thanks to my guest, Bear Bell, this week. Thank you, and bye-bye. See you next time. Mm.